everybody on earth, the 7.2 billion of us, communicate in pictures. And we understand this very deeply at Getty Images. We know that nothing rivals the power of an image. For those of you under 30, um, that's somebody called Diana. She was the most famous woman in the world. She was the Princess of Wales. And uh, why did I choose this picture? We founded Getty Images in 95. This image was shot two or three years before then. The reason I chose this picture is the central issue in my life, other than Getty Images and my family, has been HIV AIDS and global health. I've spent most of my adult years working in and around this area in a number of different places, sometimes right deep on the ground in places like northern Mozambique, sometimes in Washington, D.C., to persuade the U.S. government to give $1.6 billion a year to the Global Fund to fight AIDS. It's just me, it just means a lot to me. Maybe it's because I'm South African. I don't know, but it is what it is. This image was one of the first images that taught me about the power of photography. At that time, AIDS was misunderstood. And people thought that you would get AIDS by touching somebody who had AIDS, AIDS or was HIV positive. And for the most famous woman in the world to be hugging an HIV positive AIDS baby did more to destigmatize the disease, to educate people about what it was really about, than 10,000 articles by learned academics in the New England Journal of Medicine or whatever it might be. This image, which Andy created and art directed, together with the photographer who was a colleague of ours called Gandhi Vasan. This image and the thousands of copies of it, none of which have been as well executed as this one, have sold thousands and thousands of times. And why did I choose it? Because imagery, as you know, is about concepts. It's about emotion. It's about saying something. This image has about as much to do with fish as I do. You know better than I that the concepts in this image are so well illustrated, and that's why it sells so many times. I'm not going to ask you what the concepts are, because you know. But basically, we every day get up in the morning, and we strive to find innovative, clever, and different ways to illustrate the small number of concepts, and I'm not demeaning advertising for a second, but there are only 10 concepts which really, really matter. And we need to show those 10 concepts in new and innovative ways. And use, doing this did exactly that. This is about growth. It's about individuality. It's about standing out from the crowd. It's fuck you, I'm an individual. Okay, it's fish. And how are we able to do that? By a innovative and revolutionary way of indexing or keywording images. We were the first company to, to figure out, and now it's standard, nobody even thinks about it, that you can actually use animals to do stuff. Nowadays we are constantly seeing animals to communicate brands, sell ideas. We were the first people who came up with that idea, that an animal is more than just an animal. This is an image shot by Tim Flack. What's the key to this? This image has about as much to do with a horse as the previous one had to do with fish. By using revolutionary approaches to keywording, we, we attached concepts to animals. And those concepts were very useful to your industry and others to enable them to tell the story. Another good friend of mine is one of our photographers, John Moore. John has covered every major conflict in the world. Um, and he shot this picture at Arlington Cemetery, just outside Washington, D.C. And uh, what I love about it, and the reason I chose it, was that we see so many images of war and tragedy all the time. And those images are typically full of blood and guts. And, uh, you know, in the moment, bang, bang, club shots. And Brent took this picture. In the year that it was taken, it was voted by various websites, including MSNBC, as the best picture of the year. And I asked Brent why, he, not Brent, uh, John Moore, why he thought that. And this is what he said, and I'll read. He said, after all the tense moments in places of conflict and the blood and guts in every conflict zone of the world, this one photograph, this is what John Moore said, this one photograph from a much quieter place haunts me more than any other. 
There's the power of imagery. Um, it's universal. It works in every language. It works in every country. It's personal. It's intimate. And it tells the story of loss, war, and grief in a spectacular way. He has another war photo, but very, very different. Highly controversial images shot by Spencer Platt. This was soon after the bombing of most of Beirut. And uh, it won the overall World Press photo. And it's very interesting when you look at it. Um, firstly, he was accused of setting up the photo. He said, how is it possible that people dressed like that, looking like that, in a car like that, would be in a war zone? Well, that, if you know anything about Beirut, um, is pretty typical. Oh, somebody from Beirut. You know the picture? You like it? Is it accurate? Thank you. Um, and I mean, one of the great things about this picture and the reason I chose it is a good picture will leave space for thought, will leave space for dialogue, and will be a little bit controversial, but will tell you a part of the story of that event or that place which you might not otherwise get. And I think that that, again, makes this a very powerful image. Now, this image is very special to all of us at Getty Images. We, um, we started our news business, as I said, just before 9-11. We started with four photographers. That was it. And one of those four was Chris Hondros. Chris was a huge presence at Getty Images, big person in the New York office when he wasn't covering um, the world. Um, we all got to know Chris very well, and Chris was a very, very close friend of mine and a number of ours. Chris was murdered, and I say murdered, by Gaddafi forces in Libya three years ago. He and a, another photographer, Tim Hetherington, were targeted by those forces and were killed. And this photo by Chris tells a lot about Chris, photojournalism, relationships, and what you have to do to get the right image. This was shot in Liberia in 2003 on a bridge in Monrovia. Um, this is a rebel soldier at the moment that he'd fired his whatever. I'm not an expert on weaponry. It's actually an RPG. But, um, and it captures so much. What makes the image so spectacular? Is it the bravery of everybody, the photographer and the guy? I mean, look at what's lying around there. This, is, this bridge was one of the most fought over uh, places in the whole war. It was only 200 yards. But is it the eye contact that you have? Is it the fact that I wish I had a six pack like that? I mean, I don't know. But all of those things draw you in. What happened was, this photo became very, very famous. And two years later, Chris returned to Liberia because he always followed his stories. He returned, so he went to Iraq 16 times because he wanted to keep following the story. He returned to Liberia, and he asked his translator to track down the guy in the image. And that's the guy in the image, Joseph Duo. That's Chris Hondros. That a conversation. And the guy, Joseph, said to Chris, he said, there's another problem when the, when the war's over and you're a guerrilla is I'm unemployed. He said, I'm happy the war's over, but I, now I've got nothing to do. I really want to go to school. So for the, so the sum of $86, Chris put him through school. He graduated in 2007. And I think it says a lot about Chris. It says a lot about these conflicts. These are people just like us. And it's, it says a lot about the, the connectivity um, of folks. I do not have this image on my wall. But I needed to find an image to illustrate what happens and what you're aware of has happened in the last 10 years or so in this industry. In late 2005, we heard about literally 12 guys in a cow shed in Calgary. And that, those guys had set up a company to take advantage of the power of the crowd. Now, we all know about crowdsourcing now, but this was very, very early days. That company, which is now called iStock by Getty Images, as you can see all around you, came up with a very new and disruptive model. They basically said, everybody is a photographer. Everybody. And now that digital cameras are getting cheaper and cheaper, we can now capture images more cheaply, and we can transmit them around. So why don't you send us your pictures? And if somebody is brilliant enough 
to want to license the picture, you will get what most people want in life. You'll get the glory of seeing your picture published and your name, which is way more important. Oh, and we'll also pay you some money. That's the other thing. So you'll get a royalty. This is one of the top selling eye stock images ever. And what basically has happened is that the crowdsourcing phenomenon, as you all know, has totally revolutionized this, in this world. And due to crowdsourcing, due to social media, due to sharing, we now know what I said earlier on, and no one has contradicted me, that imagery is the most used language on earth. And it's been an important part of driving a more visual world. I think visual literacy is at a much higher level than years and years ago. It was, really you, it was really the experts before who could understand pictures and communicate in pictures. Now everybody is doing that. Images have to be authentic. I mean, I don't remember a time when images didn't have to be authentic. But images have to be authentic. And how do you get authentic images? You don't use professional models. Uh, you use, you know, your long-suffering husband and the kids. Um, but this is a very attractive to your customers and to brands. I understand that. And we're creating and getting more and more and more authentic imagery. Our activation upstairs, uh, it's repicture. What does repicture mean? Repicture is we think that it's time to get rid of the cliche, to get rid of the stereotype. We think it's time for, for us and you to represent those key subjects and concepts in a way that is true, that is relevant to today, that resonates with today's society. So repicture has a simple goal, to give you the most powerful visuals that you need to get your messages across and to allow you to tell your own stories and to tell the stories of your customers, but in a way that is relevant today. And we have a lot of outmoded, outdated views of what certain things are. And I'll read off the wall over here. I'm not allowed past this pillar or I won't be in camera. Okay, I'm out of camera. Um, so age, when you think of age, how do you picture it? Balance, beauty, community. When you do these searches on sites today, you get stuff which is cliched and not relevant. And we're wanting to work with you to change that. We want to make sure that we continue to use images as a vehicle for change.